Hey everybody, welcome back to The Bourbon Note. I'm Greg. I'm Ben. Today, we're drinking bourbon. All right, Ben, this looks uh, suspiciously like a lot of bourbon. Yeah, it's a flight. It's a flight. We're doing an Evan Williams flight. We even have boards. Yeah. Have to hold the glasses. In case we want to get mobile in the middle of this. <laughs> I don't true. know why we would do that, but... Well, most flights go low from point A to point B. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you know, I've, I've noticed in watching back, like editing our videos, Yeah. every once in a while you'll throw a joke in there that I'll completely miss, and then I'm watching and I'm like, ah, I see what he did there. And I've been tempted a couple times to cut in just a video of myself going, Greg, I missed that the first time, but I appreciate <laughs> no, it. No, you should. Time. That'd be awesome. Like sure. All the dad jokes. Your so. jokes fall in the category of dad it, jokes. It, which means jokes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean, so anyway, we've got an Evan Williams flight. We do. Yeah, we just we decided we wanted to why. do this. Um, I don't really know why. I think just the, you know, Evan Williams kind of gets the reputation of being the budget of budgets. And you know, I am guilty, a couple years ago now, but of totally passing them by and yeah. assuming they're just bottom shelf. I think when people, like if, if you're a person who, you know, just like say have a whiskey and Coke, you're not yep. like into it like sure. this, you know, Evan Williams, Jim Beam, White Label, and Jack Daniels are kind of the three go-to ones. And out of those three, Evan Williams is the even budgetier one. Really? You know? Yeah, it's a little bit cheaper. I think this these usually run about 15 bucks as opposed to the Jim Beam runs a little closer to 20 and same with Jack Daniels. Okay. So, I mean, the reality is, I mean, this is, is a 1.75, but like the normal 750 bottle and bond is, is low 20s, right? Yeah. Yeah, and to be honest, they don't really sell the 750s around That's here. That's true. Have you it's noticed that? Yeah, we always get liters yeah. for some reason. Um, but yeah, I, this, I bought this home wrecker just to have on hand as kind of like a standard, you know, go-to. <laughs> and it's done its job. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so we just decided, you know, hey, let's do an Evan Williams flight. We both like Evan Williams products. Uh, I would disagree with you there. You love Evan Williams We're products both, now. Well, I think I'll speak for me. I'm an enthusiast. Yeah, I am too, actually. And another reason is that you had kind of said, like, this is a brand you've really come around on. Like, yes. Over the course of doing this channel, actually. I, think. I, I would agree, yeah. So, so we've got pours here. We've, we're starting, we're going in ascending proof. And they start at, this is 80, right? 86. 86. Yep. Okay. And so from right to left, well, from, you know, our right to left. So your uh, just regular Evan Williams black label is on your far right. 86.6, right? that's why it's second. Wow. Oh, okay, there we go. That's right. I knew there was something <laughs> weird about one of them. And this is, if anybody's watching this and doesn't recognize this bottle, Evan Williams did change their small batch. It's called 1783. Mm -hmm. It used to be an 86. It's now a 90. That doesn't sound like a big difference. I think they made more changes than just the proof point um, because this is a, yeah, well, we'll talk about it when we get there. If only there were a video on oh, YouTube of right. two people comparing the original 1783 to the new 1783. And probably nobody's done that video besides I don't know. us. Maybe they well, we're not the only ones who have done it, but I'm oh. trying to shoe people. Well, no, no, I mean, that's that's actually subtly. a good reference, yeah, because I probably need to go back and watch it. You know, I'm yeah. not sure I'll say the same thing, but, yeah, that's true. Um, and then uh, bottle and bond, hunter proof, yep, easy to find. We'll talk a little bit about each yeah. one as we get to it. So, the, the, the original, the standard Evan Williams black label, 86 proof. I think it's four years on the nose, if I remember. Heaven Hill used to have, so these are all, Evan Williams is a Heaven Hill product. Yes. Um, Heaven Hill used to have a cool thing on their website where they had basically is all the information about their, mm -hmm. the whole lineup, and it's changed a little bit. So. They're hiding something. But if I remember correctly, I think it's, I think it's four years, maybe five, but no more than that for sure. Right. Really sweet. Uh. I believe I've said this in other videos, but I know Beam kind of gets the reputation for having the nutty profile. And yes. I know Heaven Hill does too, but Beam mm -hmm. really gets it. And I really get that kind of nuttiness on so Evan Williams in particular. What I get is actually peanut shells. Like yeah. when you're shelling peanuts, the actual, I don't know why Salted it's different. Salted peanut shells for me. Um, 
But the shell, this that's what it reminds me of is after you've cracked all the peanuts. Yeah. 100% it, it agree. It sounds like it's the shell, the husk or whatever yeah. it is. But there's some nice caramel and there's some brown sugar in there. Very standard kind of down the the road bourbon. Yep. Another thing I like about the Evan Williams is that it's 86 proof versus 80 that... Oh, some other entry yeah. Yeah, points. Yeah. All right, I'm going in for the taste. Okay. I like the brown sugar. It's kind of a notable. Mm-hmm. There's just nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's 86 proof and, you know, you and I kind of tend to like that 100 proof range. I'm getting plenty of burn on this though. I mean... It, it's got plenty of flavor. It really does. Lots of flavor. There's a pretty strong black pepper note that kind of is going through it. Yeah. That could be off-putting, I guess, is maybe the... I mean, it's not so far out of balance as to really ruin the bourbon, but it is the one noticeable thing. Is it feels like it is kind of a punch as I opposed to some other really nice flavors. I feel like Evan Williams in general has kind of a, a bit of a sharpness to it that I don't mean in a bad way that yeah. I actually really like. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said salted peanut shell is that extra little sharpness to that flavor. Yeah. Which I really like. So it's not a sharpness like it's a bitterness or anything like that. Right. And it's not, uh, you know, high proof, obviously. Mm -hmm. But for an, especially an entry level, but I mean, just a, a kind of a go-to, you know, for somebody who doesn't want that 100 proof range, that's good. I agree. I, I just have no complaints about that at all. Right. You know? I mean, it's not overly complex, which you're not going to get so much at 86 proof. A, a younger proof. Yeah, younger, lower proof. But for the stats that this thing has, it packs a good flavor to it. It does. It is really good. And so one of the concerns and the reasons why we say that we're trepidatious with certain 80, 86 proof bourbons is because they take a bourbon that has a proof of 110, 115. Then they add water to bring it down to 80. Mm -hmm. And that lowers the proof, but it also lowers the flavor. Yeah. Yeah. It lowers all those flavor nuances and all the richness. Yeah. And it really changes like that. This one holds on to a lot of flavor. Um, more than you would expect. Yeah, more than you expect, because they've you know, proofed it down quite a ways, probably. All right, well, let's move on to the uh, single barrel. This one is the one that really got me into Evan Williams stuff. Okay. This is about 26 bucks around here, which in my opinion is an absolute steal. Mm -hmm. It's 86.6 proof, so you're still in that lower proof range, but you're getting age on this one. So most of these range in that seven, seven mid sevens to eight, sometimes even more than that. And do they still put the info on the bottle? They do. So this was put in oak in 2012. So this one was barreled on October 29th, 2012, and then bottled on July 28th, 2020. So this is almost an eight year bourbon. Okay. Which is awesome for $26. $26. So basically- Single barrel. What's cool about comparing these two is you really get to see what those extra few years does because they're basically the exact same proof except for that 0.6. Like it's the things. same bourbon twice as long in the, in the barrel, basically. Yeah, exactly. So you really get to see what that jump up in age does to it. Yep. So. All right, let's go in. I'm not doing water between these because they're in the same family and same I really want to see just yeah. raw against each other how they do. Yep. Mm, good barrel on that. I'm jumping right into it. I'm just getting a little root beer on this one for some reason. And I never get that off of this. Usually I get that off of like a higher rise. Some good spice. So this is a perfect example of how to understand what the barrel is doing to the bourbon. Yeah. Because that's the difference, is age slash barrel. Yeah, it really is. I mean, yeah, it's a different barrel and it's a single barrel. So these are going to vary from yep. bottling to bottling. But I'm going to go back char, and forth on these. The char in the barrels is really what's providing the difference. Mm -hmm. And I would say, I love corn, I'm okay with rye, love weeded bourbons, but I think the single most important thing is time in the bot in the barrel. Oh yeah. You know, this Even one... above proof point. I mean, <laughs> like I prefer a longer aged, lower proof, I think. Yeah. If I had to choose. <laughs> well, and now when we get to the next one, this one's slightly higher proof, slightly lower age. Yeah. And then this one is higher than all of them, mm -hmm. but I think it runs four to five. I think it's, yeah, a four just over. But this one is definitely, you get a little more richness, a little more complexity. Mm -hmm. It's not, 
I mean, it's definitely in the same family, obviously, and you can tell that. But you just get a little bit more depth on this, and you get a little bit of that oak spice. You had said spice, right? Yep, definitely. Definitely some like wood sugar, some vanilla notes that are coming straight from the oak. Yeah. On the nose there, you can definitely pull the barrel out on the single barrel. Just a lot more happening. Like there's a lot more to it. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's had a lot more time to bake and it's just a lot more interesting notes. Yeah. Bourbon notes. All right, let's move on to the 1783. So as Greg said before, this is the new bottle. It's at 90 proof. Now what the difference between the old bottle and the original was again, just age. It's not a single barrel, it's a small batch. It's a small batch. So they, they took their better barrels and they combined them. It's still probably a thousand barrel like run. So it's, I mean, they're a large producer. They produce a lot of whiskey. Yeah, yeah, who knows what their small batch is. Yeah. Didn't we have one I think recently it's a thousand. that said it was a couple hundred barrels? Well, yeah, I mean, the, I remember that one the... that we just had a phone call with, they only do 15 barrels in a run. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, so this is a small batch. But what the difference was is this is a six year, if I remember correctly. And I believe it still is. It's not age stated, but on the website it said yeah. six. So basically this one used to be the same proof point, just two more years in the barrel. Yep. Now it's two more years in the barrel. And it's a small and batch, higher which proof. means they've put together, you know, the better barrels. Yep. This one, and I'm going to be right up front, I'm not objective in this review. <laughs> <laughs> Greg really kind of fell in love with yeah, this one this as is a regular kind of go-to go daily to, pour sort of yep, bourbon. Like it a lot. Um, and I think it it's quite distinct in this um, flight because it's just, it has some flavors that I don't get out of the others. It's obviously the same family, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on the nose, you're definitely getting a little bit of an extra. This has got a little extra spice to it as well. I'm getting the sweet notes. The thing that I typically get out of this is almost a, well, I'll wait till I get there. This is, <laughs> this is really interesting doing all these in a row. Yeah, I don't just think to I've see actually how it, done The same this whiskey yeah. just changes from bottling to bottling. Cause they're, it's definitely different. I'm gonna keep going back to the original. I probably should have poured a little bit more. Cause that's gonna be my- uh, You control. Yeah, well, and that's gonna be the one that I'm gonna compare all of them to since this is the- uh, Original? Yeah, the base model. This is. Yeah. The one that they're all, you know, they all come from. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is this one turned up to 11, I feel. Like it's the same flavors, but just much more intense. Just a lot more happening. Yeah, on the palate, definitely the sweet notes from this one are much thicker. This one definitely had, pulls the oak out better because it's, yep. it's yep. obvious it's got the age. a decent amount of time in the barrel. This one for me, it's the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's not maple syrupy, but it's close. I mean, it's it's in the super sweet. There's a, a cotton candy note that I talk about occasionally. Mm-hmm pink cotton candy if you're playing at home. Always the pink cotton. No, sometimes it's blue. Yeah, you've had a couple that might have been blue, I suppose. But yeah, this is just a, a really, really... At this point, I'm just drinking these just <laughs> left and right. <laughs> well, that's what a flight is. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, that's interesting. I, yeah, I think I definitely pull more sweetness out of this one than I do out of the 1783 than I do out of the single barrel. Yeah. The single barrel's got that kind of refined oak. It's still got definitely sweetness, obviously. Yep. Um, but if you go from the 1783 back to the regular black label, you can definitely feel like it, the, there's a drop off there. So there's a drop off a little bit. There's four proof points. But it definitely, it's, I mean, it's it's there's a difference. And it's not a drop off to something bad, but it's just, you can tell there's, this one's just a little more basic, the black label. But it's like the same flavors, just not quite as intense. Like it really still it still tastes the same. It's just not quite as like bold water. Yeah. 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 Exactly. All right. Now let's move on to the 
bottled. bottled in bond. So this one is um, 100 proof, obviously, because it's bottled in bond. At least four years. I think this one is four years on the nose. Okay. I would think so with this. I, I got to imagine, yeah. I mean, if they're bottling it this cheap at 100 proof, if they're mm -hmm. going to go up that proof point, they're probably not keeping it in the barrel too much longer. Yeah. But this one is kind of one of my, like, budget... Like, I'm, I'm a fan of this one as a, you know, just checking all the boxes of value, flavor, proof point. Mm -hmm. Like, this is in that conversation with, like, a Wild Turkey 101 sure. sort of thing, you know, where it's like a, it's a budget one that kind of exceeds what you would expect from it. But it's also one that you can get at every liquor store. Mm -hmm. Not crazy expensive. And always, always good. This was $28.99, not on sale yeah. for a 175 home wrecker. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, it's in a bottled and bond, 100 proof. I mean, you know. Are there, well, yeah, I guess there are. I was wondering about the price of bottled and bonds and where that falls, but I guess it's in line with kind of, there's some other beam products that are in that price range. I mean, they're 70, yeah. they're 750s. Yeah. As opposed to the, the beast, but. Similar notes, still that peanut shell. I was just gonna say, really on the bottled and bond, that peanut shell comes through a lot. That salted peanut shell. And that's probably the extra proof, giving it that little extra edge. Yeah. And like, almost like caramel candies for the caramel note. Do you know what I like about all of these? Is that these are the type of bourbons that, if you wanna sit and sip whiskey with a friend all night long or have a cigar like you and I do, yeah. um, you want something that's got good flavor to it, but you don't want to, I mean, if you're going to have a few of them, eventually your taste buds kind of burn out. And especially if you're smoking a cigar, yep. taste buds kind of burn out. You don't want to necessarily just sip through a whole bottle of something expensive when you're doing something like that. Sure. You know? yep. Like if you're going to a party, you know, or you're sitting at the bonfire or something like that. All of these are perfect for that. The price point is great for that. The flavor is great for that. Mm -hmm. They just, they work perfectly. And they're still legitimately good bourbons. Yeah, it's good utility bourbon, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there are a ton of bourbons on the shelf that are interesting and you could, you know, pour one of those for someone who's kind of new. But any one of these is an absolutely great bourbon. Oh. Yeah, and, the, and I mean, we decided to do this flight and we actually struggled to put it together because either he was out of one or I was out of the other. Like, <laughs> between the two of us, it, we, yeah. we made it work, but we had to... <laughs> juggle some things around in order to get the all the bottles. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because we run out all the time. That proof definitely kicks this one up a notch. I agree. So now you're at the 100 proof point, you know, going from 86 to 100, you know, if you compare the original one to this one, there's definitely a, a jump up there. I wonder about, um, I don't do a lot of bourbon cocktails, you know, like a whiskey Cokes or something like that. Yeah. I just don't particularly sure. like them. Yep. So I, I don't know the mindset of someone who does like a whiskey Coke, what they're looking for. If like, if you want as little whiskey flavor as possible, or if you want a little kick of whiskey, you just want it mixed. Yeah. You know, cause a lot of times in a mixed drink, you want to taste the booze. You just want it balanced out. Sure. And so for me being someone who really likes the taste of bourbon, mm -hmm. I would think for a cocktail, a hundred proofer like this would really kind of give you that extra bite. Because mm -hmm. when you, I know you're drinking alcohol, you want a little bite from it, right? Yes, yeah, I agree. You know, so I kind of wonder if maybe, you know, people that like to make cocktails, if you're just doing the black label, maybe try the white label just to have that little extra kick to it. There's only one way we could find out. We would have to make cocktails we or we invite somebody on who likes to make cocktails? No, we, we, I think you should try one. Okay. Do a you know, bourbon and Coke or whatever works for you. Maybe we can film that separate. I do have some Coke here oh, well. in the fridge right there. Huh. Um, but yeah, I wonder like, but again, that kind of breaks down to like, what are you looking for in a so, whiskey Coke? Yeah. Like, do you want the whiskey to be as buried as possible so you don't have to taste it? So I do occasionally do whiskey Coke, not super often, but it, the reason why I do typically is because I want something cold. Like that's more of a mm -hmm. summer thing where you're outside and so you're gonna have ice, you're gonna have Coke, and then depending on your 
life circumstance, either a ton of bourbon or a little bit of bourbon. <laughs> well, <laughs> mostly, depending on your life circumstance. Meaning, are you at home and it doesn't matter for the rest oh, of the I night? Oh, I thought you meant like things are just going <laughs> off the rails. It's like, screw <laughs> it, we're drinking tonight. <laughs> well, that too. <laughs> that, that too, yeah. <laughs> Do this one again. Yeah, every one of these. Now, you had brought up before, like there's some unique ones on the shelf when we were talking about like you bring this to a party or whatever. Yeah. These are not particularly unique, but they are down the road, middle of the road, you know, within the lanes, just good bourbon flavors. Maybe leaning a little bit to the sweeter side, particularly this one, but I think all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some plenty of bourbons that are have other flavors that are not quite as cotton candy like. Mm -hmm. And the cotton candy note, like some people, when I first heard that as a, a flavor note, I was yeah. like, what the hell? Which yeah. I kind of was with most, you know, when you're new to drinking <laughs> sure. bourbon, you're like, how do you, how do you get banana out of that? Yeah. yeah. And so the cotton candy note is one that's kind of hard to find, but once you notice it, it's it's there, yep. you know? Yep. But yeah, if you're going to a party or something like that, or if you're a person who likes the black label and you're starting to maybe get into just, you know, drinking it on the rocks, mm -hmm. you know, without a mixer, or maybe even leaning into drinking it neat. I have no problem drinking this neat. Not at all. I mean, that's what we're doing right now, and it's awesome. But yeah, you could up to you know any of these. If you don't want to hit 100 proof right away, I understand that. Mm -hmm. Grab the single barrel, 26 bucks. Comes in a little bit of a fancier bottle. Looks cool on the shelf. You bring that to a party, it looks yeah, a little fancier. It does look cool. But it still doesn't you know, break the bank or anything, and you're not going to care if you kill the whole bottle that night. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's overall good. Every one of these just, yeah, I'm a fan. I agree. So, I yeah, I, I think that, um, yeah, I hope people don't kind of get stuck in that mindset of, like, just because it's budget, it must not be good, or it's, you know, like, like, like rot gut whiskey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you heard that term before? Yeah, definitely. Which, once you start learning about whiskey, you realize that that's just not really such thing as that. It's, <laughs> it's you know, like, one whiskey isn't going to you know, affect you a whole lot different than any other one. It may taste different and you may not enjoy it as yeah, much, but- I'm just gonna make fun of a whiskey, but the reality is, with a few exceptions, they're all really good. I think that's why we like bourbon and that's why we've done a yeah. channel, is we we really like bourbon. And, and a distiller has to really mess it up for yeah. us to not like it, but Heaven Hill has done a great job with these. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, well, we are Evan Williams fans, if you can't tell, so, if you're, uh, especially if you're new, go out and, and explore these a little bit because it's a great way to kind of dip your toes into at least one flavor profile without spending a lot of money, but still getting something good quality. Agreed. All right, well, this has been an Evan Williams flight on the Bourbon Note. I'm Ben. I'm Greg. Cheers. <laughs>